with the acquisition of a new SLR or mirrorless digital camera and I'll explain the difference between them in a future program. It needn't worry us here but it will probably come with a kit lens, a zoom lens of modest magnification, three or four times. Uh, I've got an example here, as you can see. This particular lens, out of interest, is the Zuiko 12-50, to so it's just over four times magnification from a wide angle through standard to telephoto, as I say, of about four times magnification. And incidentally, we talk about standard lens uh, in respect of wide angle and telephoto because the angle of view is similar to the human eye. Now these, these lenses, these cameras are quite good, I find, within their limited range. But there are several caveats, which I will come into now. At this stage, before we go any further, perhaps I should explain the difference between an optical zoom lens and a digital zoom. They are quite different. If your SLR, or in particular rich camera, has a modest lens with a zoom ratio perhaps of three or four times, it's possible that a digital zoom will cut in when you are at full telephoto. Now this is important because it may not tell you that it is doing this. So what is the difference between an optical zoom and a digital? I will now show you. An optical zoom lens either brings the subject nearer or further away through magnification of the uh, optic. And in fact, if you are on full telephoto, then it also contracts distances between various objects. And you can see that clearly at this uh, steam fair up on the South Downs. The other thing to bear in mind that when you are on full telephoto, with your zoom lens, that depth of field is reduced, that is sharpness from front to back, and it becomes easier to isolate the subject from the background, making it stand out. A digital zoom brings the subject closer in quite a different way. It does it by cropping the image. Therefore, reducing the number of pixels and its uh, quality. Also, it doesn't change the perspective. Now, if your camera goes to a digital zoom after you've exhausted the possibilities of the optical zoom, and it does it automatically, it's best, I think, to turn it off. Otherwise, you'll be reducing the quality of the uh, image inadvertently. We don't want that really, do we? It will come as no surprise that an optical zoom lens of greater magnification will be larger, heavier and probably more expensive. But just to show you the difference, here's a shot of Mount Stuart. It's on the Isle of Bute in Scotland, well worth a visit incidentally if you are up that way. Now, standing from the same spot in the garden, facing the house, here is a shot at wide angle, as far as I can go on wide angle, and then compare it with full telephoto. This is 16 times magnification, optical zoom, so the quality is preserved. This is not a digital zoom, it's optical. But there is another issue that can trap the unwary photographer about optical zoom lenses. Now, I'm going to have to talk about apertures beyond their importance of being half the equation of giving you a correct exposure. That will be a program for later, but I've got to touch upon apertures now 
to demonstrate, to show what this problem is, can be, with an optical zoom lens. It is quite likely that the zoom lens on your newly acquired digital camera is what we call variable aperture. Now, in plain language, what that means is that as you zoom from wide angle through to telephoto, then you lose the intensity of light reaching the sensor gradually from one extreme to the other. In other words, the intensity of light you have at wide angle is not shared at full telephoto, and that we call a variable aperture lens. You can get constant aperture lenses. I've got one here, and as you can see, they are bigger and heavier. But this is constant aperture throughout its entire zoom range. As I say, it's heavier, it's larger, and it costs about a thousand pounds as well. The status of an optical zoom lens is often mentioned around the um, barrel of the lens. Now, the lens I was using for Mount Stewart a moment ago is variable aperture. And you can see two aperture figures mentioned, one for the wide angle end and the other for telephoto. But the lens I was showing you just a moment, there is only just one value mentioned, f4 in this particular case. That means, of course, f4 is maintained throughout the entire zoom range of this lens. Lenses, incidentally, on compact and bridge cameras are almost certainly going to be variable aperture. An area of photography where some photographers become unstuck is trying to freeze the action with a variable aperture zoom on a dull day, perhaps a sports meeting where you are not in control of the weather. And you may find, because of the loss of light between wide angle and telephoto, on a dull day, you cannot freeze the action without increasing the ISO. Now, if you're wondering what ISO is, that I will explain in another program. When I visited the Oxford and Cambridge boat race at the start at Barnes Bridge, it was a lovely sunny day. There was no difficulty, and I was using a variable aperture lens, there was no difficulty in freezing the action. And by the way, this is at the start of the race, and those boats go amazingly fast. You have to work quickly. No time to faff about and wonder what you're doing. Now, with a constant aperture lens, which unfortunately are bigger and larger, this problem about freezing the action on a dull day would not arise so much. But quite likely, with such a large lens, you would need a tripod or a monopod to keep the camera steady. Before we leave the subject of camera shake, a big mistake that beginners make when using a powerful telephoto lens for the first time is the increase in camera shake. Because of the extreme magnification, then without a tripod or a monopod, then it's more difficult to keep the camera steady. And as an example, this shot I handheld at full telephoto. Look closely. I'll expand it if necessary. I think I need to because, I'm sorry, it's a lovely picture, but it's not sharp. When you're using the wide angle end of a variable zoom lens, an optical 
zoom lens, then the problems you might experience at telephoto do not apply so much at the wide angle end. For example, because of the lack of magnification, it becomes easier to handhold, and also at the wide angle end, you have the use, the facility of the widest aperture that the camera and lens can give you. Now, I can hear you saying, what is he talking about apertures? What does it mean? Well, as I said earlier, they are important as being part of the equation of a correct exposure. But even if you are on auto, they do a lot more than that in the craft of photography. And I will show you that in the next programme.